Hello everybody and welcome back to VFR. Today we're going to do a little bit of a rundown of some of the goodies we got with Sim Update 7 here. Uh, in front of us, we're starting off with the Pilatus PC-6 Porter. And again, I think a bunch of the airplanes we have, when we get, bring something new to the Sim. I think this is definitely one of them. Now the PC-6 have been flown, there have been versions floating around. Uh, Milvis has a really good version out. Highlight, I mean, I've heard oh, nothing but good things about it. Uh, if you're into this kind of airplane... For someone like me, who's more casual, might fly this a couple times, I am very excited to see this in the sim. I don't think it's... It's not as detailed as the Milvis version, of course. Uh, but it's a good model. It's nice, and it's um, it's a good, fun airplane to fly. It adds a little bit of options for stuff like Neofly, um, for casual bush flying, in kind of a similar way to a Grand Caravan. Um, definitely a good option. This is designed by Pilatus. 1960s still in service uh, with the Austrian Air Force Myanmar's Air Force and the Swiss Air Force uh, production ended in 2019 595 built all sorts of fun we do have a bunch of versions that we get this is the general cargo version if we hop into the cockpit uh, we'll look behind us you see a cargo hold and we also have a passenger version as well as one with skis and floats so you get all the all of the different variants that you might want for it And again, this is kind of a fun bush cargo hauler alternative to something like a Grand Caravan, which I think is kind of unrivaled in that role. I think now you get something else that you could fly in. And um, looking at the cockpit, looking around, it's a nice model. It is, again, that unique kind of cockpit layout with a shelf in front of you, throttle on the shelf. There's nothing really quite like it that I've seen so far. Um, you get nice big labels on the, on the outside. It's a nice model. It's well done. It's well put together. Um, you do get mostly steam gauges in front of you. So that's really good. Your primary instruments are steam gauges. I think it's a nice um, a nice option for bush flying, especially if maybe you're tired of flying G1000 um, Grand Caravan. This could be a good a good thing for you. It might might be good. And then also you get a GPS um, unit up front as well. Now I haven't flown too much of this. We've just been puttering around, so I can't speak for any of the special um, abilities of this airplane. But just as a, a broad overview, looks cool. Looks fun. Um, and it kind of has all the things you'd come to expect from uh, from a solidly good default airplane. Um, and it's a good option, I think, if you're into the bush flying or any of the air hauler stuff. All right, up next, the Cub Crafters NX Cub. Pretty, um, it's very similar. It's, in fact, the same airplane as the Cub Crafters X Cub that we have. Um, it's a bush, which is a bush plane, light sport, based on the Piper Cub, roughly and upgraded for heavy bush flying a uh, popular one it's a good one it's um one we haven't covered but it is similar to the savage um cub but with a glass cockpit um and you get uh, there's float version as well as a ski version i think already in the game this one the big difference is it has this big kind of uh funny looking nose wheel so you uh it's just a different form factor for the airplane we had and I think that's really nice. I always love when these, because um, these airplanes are produced and have all sorts of mods and lots of different options available for them. And it's really nice to see some of those uh, embodied in the sim. Otherwise, it's very similar to the uh, X-Cub. You have your, uh, your upfront glass cockpit here. Very simple cockpit. Uh, but again, it's a nice, nicely designed, uh, nicely modeled airplane to fly. Uh, is this airplane for you? What does this airplane bring us? Just more options of bush flying. Um, it's a lot... It, I look at this a lot like a lot of the... Um, there's a lot of 172 and 152 tail dragger mods out on places like flightsim.to. It's a similar type of thing. If you like the Cub, the X-Cub, or any kind of Piper Cub derivative, you want to fly flying it with a nose wheel, give it a shot. It's a different... It, uh, you know, There's different landing considerations. Uh, you have to approach it differently. It's... Um, it just adds a little bit of variety to the Cub family. I think that's a great thing. I think it also shows one of the strengths of how the sim is designed, where you can kind of plug and play different parts and different um, models and different components together. Um, it seems like Microsoft's doing a good job of leveraging that modularity. Uh, you notice that when you're editing the file structure, it can be a little bit of a pain sometimes when you're making uh, deliveries, but I think in situations like this, it helps us get a lot of variation on similar platforms, which is always cool. Next up, we have the Velocity. I don't have any idea what to make of this one. Uh, it's 
kind of a preview of helicopters in the sim and uh, it's in theory it's a, a type of air taxi so an urban air taxi you can ferry people from place to place I gotta take off on this one and just see what see how it actually works because I have not a clue does this do anything oops I turned it off And now I believe that this is an autonomous system. But I could be wrong about that. Um, very, uh, very stable. Um, that's probably by design. Normally in a helicopter, I'm not touching the stick at all. Normally in a helicopter, I would have gone into the ground by now. And it just feels um, sluggish as... Yeah, sluggish is probably the right word, actually. It's weirdly sluggish. It is interesting, though. I mean, it's really not a... Um, it's not a helicopter in the same way that... Um, it's flying itself. And it feels like it's flying itself. You're just kind of nudging it in the right direction. And, that, I mean, I think it's really neat. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't call it the helicopter... Uh, it's not a replacement for something like the the H-135 uh, or the Rotor Sim Pilot uh, R-44. If you want the helicopter experience, uh, I think that's your better bet. But this is kind of an interesting proof concept. It's funky. It's kind of unique. And, um, yeah, I think it's interesting. All right, so next up, there you got the Pitts S-1S. Uh, this is one of the airplanes also kind of tied into Reno uh, in the biplane class. But we it comes up with Sim Update. Seven. Uh, basically, we have a Pitts Special S2. Uh, it has two seats. This has one seat, one little tiny bubble seat right there. Uh, it's, it's a cute airplane. It's small and aerobatic. It's doing something funky with the propeller. It didn't happen last time I um, didn't happen last time I flew it. So I don't know what's going on there. But a fun little airplane, especially if you're into, aer into the uh, aerobatics or anything like that. A good option. Um, kind of expands on what we have with the Pitts uh, S2. It's a very interesting. We talk about that in the Reno uh, expansion probably a little bit more. So last but not least, certainly, probably one of the most anticipated airplanes coming out is the F-18E Super Hornet. Now, as a DCS Hornet aficionado, I'm going to check that at the door. Um, but this is, a, this is an interesting airplane. It's a high-performance military jet. Probably the first real one we have in the sim. It can go supersonic. Uh, it has afterburners, which you have to map to a particular control. A lot of very cool, um, cool additions. I think that will help other people build out on it. You hear it spooling up. Sounds are good. Obviously, I have a lot of expectations when it comes to the sounds. Uh, but the cockpit is modeled really nice. Um, I will say that. It is a nicely modeled cockpit. It does something funky with the views I haven't quite figured out. But just looking around. Oh, you can get rid of the stick too, so that's good. I mean, it is a Super Hornet. So for those who are kind of interested in what the difference is between a F-18C and an F-18E, you have this nice digital HUD, or this digital... Um, UFC upfront controller here. I don't know how much of this works, but uh, it's interesting to dig into. You have a moving map down here on the AMPCD, your multi-purpose color display. Um, I'm not sure. I thought all of the displays were color in the Super Hornet, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, but yeah, it's a definitely a really good looking model. Um, a lot of it's not going to be... A lot of it's in up. Um, but that's okay. I think for what it is, for the, being a fast jet in the sim, for getting some of those um, dynamics implemented into the sim, I think it's definitely a great uh, step forward. So we're going to actually take it off and run on out. Ooh. Okay. It. I mean, I'll give them credit. It looks good. My muscle memory is kicking in. But that's not how it handles. So uh, The other big thing that this adds is a collineated HUD. So if I move to the side, the HUD kind of moves with me. 
Uh, it is a pretty thick HUD. The lines are thick on the airspeed and stuff. Uh, it's not standard NATO symbology, but that's okay. Oh, do I have a nose wheel steering button, I wonder? So we'll roughly line it up and um, take off. We should have flaps set to half. And we will go, um, we'll just go ride the power up. Brakes are on, we'll take them off. And we are away. So 98 on the HUD. I mean, the HUD, it's not, um, and we're off. So yeah, the HUD is not perfect. You do get an E bracket, so that's nice. Um, we're at 240 knots. Gear's got to come up. We'll bring the flaps up to full. That looks like 300 knots. And it's nimble. It's good. Nice. Um, good nice solid airplane I mean I think the HUD implementation that's a good step um, for other airplanes like this to get added to the sim and the model is good it is good so we'll do a quick scenic flyby of Acadia National Park so all in all again I think this is a big kind of update for um, for the sim I think in a lot of ways uh, with other airplanes coming in behind. I mean, the BMDG 737 and those kinds of airplanes are starting to bear down on us a little bit. Up to 466 knots. And I think that Sim Update 70 gets... It's a good step in the right direction for um, a lot of the things we're doing. So, no attack radar. And JSAO display. I don't have any JSAOs on. There's plenty of clicking around to do to see what is actually, um... Oh, you do get a checklist. Okay. So, again, I think if you're looking for... Uh, yeah, it comes free with the sim. It's a good airplane. Um, I'm not a huge... I don't really go for these kinds of airplanes in the sim. Not any of the ones that have come out, like the F-14 or the uh, Eurofighter or anything like that. But if that's your thing, I think this is going to make you pretty happy. I think it'll be a, a good implementation of it for cruising around, for flying fast, for flying high. Definitely a good option for you. And, I mean, it looks really good. The external model, nothing to complain about there. And it sounds good, too. So... All in all, really fun addition to the sim. I think it takes us in a couple different directions with the air racing, with different activities popping up, with the uh, implementation of fast jets. Lots of good progress here. Lots of stuff to dig into, and we will over the coming few weeks. It's going to be a busy time, uh, but I'm looking forward to that. So, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, ideas for stuff to do with these airplanes, things you're going to do, drop them in the comment section below. As always, this has been VFR. Take it easy, y'all. stable. It's beeping at me. That's totally normal.